here at Borough Hall um, for this uh, initiative. Uh, this was so important, and um, they spent the last year and a half of bringing this together on how do we uh, provide uh, free legal services to those who are going through some economically challenging times. And I say this over and over again, uh, entering a government building is a difficult task for people uh, who are not familiar with the surroundings of a government building. That task multiplies when you have to uh, 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 receive some form of legal service and even more when a person has English as a second language. Our partners here are sending a very loud and clear message that your economic status should not have an impact on your ability to receive fair and legal advice. And giving individuals the important advice on how to take the first steps of navigating our system of government around civil issues are so important. And we want to thank them. They are truly partners to look at, the men and women who are veterans, who were able to adorn a green military fatigue abroad to fight in defense of our country, yet when they return home, cannot receive some of the basic services, and that is what we want to stop. Victims of domestic violence, who are who's finding government to be extremely challenging, and although they go through their abuse at home, they have to go and be abused again by governmental services that are extremely restrictive and don't have the proper information. Foreclosure prevention. How do we stop individuals from losing their home? A home is more than four walls. It's a place where an individual has the precursor to sleep, to experience the American dream, and so many people wake up to the nightmare realities of losing their homes, and we want to stop that um, from happening. All of the services that we will provide here in Borough Hall, a building with a welcome mat says to all Brooklynites that you are welcome to come and learn how do you empower your life, how do you get over the hurdles that life appears to be presenting. This is so important, this initiative that we are doing. People are hurting, and hurt people hurt themselves, and they hurt others. And we must find a way to alleviate, if not eradicate, their pain. And that's what this initiative is about, and all of our partners. This started last June when our office reached out and spoke with the advocates and say, what do we need to do to create this partnership and the synergy that's needed? And this is what it has produced. I cannot thank those uh, professional organizations for what they're doing from the Bar Association to our veterans groups to those with LIFT that are dealing with individuals who have payments that they must do for child support and get caught up in the civil or criminal justice system because of the inability to do so. It is reaching people where they are, giving them the resources they need to take them where they ought to be, not leaving any Brooklyn Knights behind, not allowing justice to be elusive because a person does not have the economic means. It is showing the compassion, the commitment, and understanding that a simple civil or criminal procedure can actually have a major impact on the lives of people. That's what Bar Hall is supposed to be about. This is the safe haven to ensure that our criminal and civil justice system would do just that, provide justice. And so again, I want to thank my team here and the partners that we were able to bring together to make this initiative uh, poss possible. So we would like some of the advocates uh, to speak um, and share what they would be doing here at Bur Borough Hall. The first uh, advocate that we have, I would like to speak, is Ms. Kulain. Oh, these glasses are terrible. Uh, advocate from the Director of Veteran Advocacy Project, Urban Justice Center. 
thank you so much. Um, we're very grateful, <clears throat> sorry, that President Adams has made access to justice such an important issue. And it's wonderful for lawyers to be coming out and making themselves accessible to people in the communities where they work and live. Uh, our project works with veterans of any era, any discharge status on housing, benefits, VA claims, really anything that comes through the door. And with the VA Health Center closing in downtown Brooklyn in just a couple of months, we're very grateful that this hopefully will be a new hub, a new center of health for all of Brooklyn's veterans. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next is uh, Executive Director of Brooklyn Bar Association, Mr. Henderson. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just got a promotion there, actually. Uh, my name is Bill Flynn. I'm the managing attorney of the Brooklyn Volunteer Lawyers Project for Closure Prevention. And uh, uh, the VLP would like to thank the borough president, Mr. Eric Adams, and the good people that work here at Borough Hall. We'd especially like to thank Tanya Hill for uh, being a great partner to work for. And we want to thank them for reaching out to create this partnership to serve Brooklyn homeowners facing foreclosure. Since 2009, it's been the mission of the VLP Foreclosure Prevention Project to preserve homes and communities in Brooklyn. The communities of this borough have been some of the hardest hit in the country by the foreclosure crisis. The one statistics we all do know, though, is that homeowners do better when they have legal representation. Creating this foreclosure clinic has allowed the people of the borough to come to the center of their government, the People's House, to get help. Mr. Borough President, thanks to your leadership, since the inception of our foreclosure clinic in May 2015, the VLP has served 39 of your constituents, and we welcome the opportunity and the challenge to continue to serve the communities of Brooklyn and preserve their homes and their neighborhoods. Thank you. Thank you. Well said. Well said. And a good friend for over 35 years, Sharon Myrie at Lyft. Thank you, Mr. Borough President, for aging me. <laughs> um, I'm Sharon Myrie. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of uh, Legal Information for Families Today, fondly known as Lyft. And I'm so delighted to be here and to join my colleagues in this uh, fantastic uh, initiative. I want to acknowledge one of my board members who's here today, Susan Kramer. Thank you for coming. And uh, before I forget, I also want to thank uh, two individuals who have been very helpful to us in this whole process. Amr Jumeau, who uh, you met earlier, and also to Tanya Cockfield. Cockfield, thank you, Tanya, for all your help. Uh, Lyft, for 20 years, we're actually celebrating our 20th year, has been working in family court, working with those families who are unrepresented, primarily in child support, custody, and visitation services. And so we've been doing that for uh, 20 years, and it, we're really delighted. This is the first step um, that I think in, in our, our our initiative to really bring this into the community. There's so many families who need that kind of support and help, and so we're really delighted to be able to come here to the borough president's office and to provide these services, not only uh, during the day, but also during uh, the evening hours when families cannot get out of work to be able to ask questions. And so we're really, really delighted to be here and to be able to be a part of this great initiative. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. And Jamila Hayes, director of, uh, Jamila, you would live. Okay, Sharon just spoke, okay. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Nachman, Brooklyn Legal Services. Ms. Nachman. Ms. Nachman. I'm doing an awful job that's in all right, seeing. That's all right, that's all right. Actually, <laughs> as one person commented before, it's a major challenge to have a bunch of attorneys get together and only speak for one minute at a time. So I'll, I will try to comport with that. Uh, basically, my name is Freddie Nackman. I'd like to thank the borough president and his staff for the continued opportunity to reach out to the underprivileged of Brooklyn. In my capacity as Director of Outreach and Elder Law at Brooklyn Legal Services, I've noted the ever-increasing need for legal assistance for the elderly in particular in Brooklyn. Um, this clinic, and with my partners behind me, uh, this clinic comports with our goals to keep seniors um, housed, can, you know, to remain in their apartments and to keep on leading independent lives. We're grateful for this opportunity uh, that is being provided to us and, and my colleagues 
and I look forward to continuing the very important work that this opportunity gives us. Thank you. Thank you. And Ms. Garcia Bigelow, Domestic Violence Project Urban Justice Center. That was okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much to the borough president and to everyone in the office and to my partners here. Um, the Domestic Violence Project has been up and running for almost 13 years here in Brooklyn where we provide services, both legal advocacy and therapeutic services to all victims of domestic violence, irrespective of gender, sexuality, status, economic, immigration. All that being said, the most exciting part of this is that all of us individually cast very wide nets to the populations that we serve but coming together allows us to come out of our individual silos of topics and issues and weave and cast a much stronger net so that people coming forward receive the kind of humanity that they have a right to, that they're able to have the respect that they have a right to, that they have a life to live in a home that they have a right to, and that that right also includes not living in a violent atmosphere. So for that, I'm extremely grateful to have this opportunity to actually collaborate not just with the borough president, but with folks that we wouldn't necessarily collaborate with on a daily basis, and to really get to know each other's issues as an issue that has to be dealt with across the board, to really take people that are in the margins and bring them to the center. So thank you very much. Thanks so Thank much. you, thank you, well said. And, and what you find, I'm, I'm sure that many of you will agree that uh, a person who comes for domestic violence issue is probably going through some form of housing issue, some form of foreclosure issue. Uh, a veteran uh, who's coming for legal services is going through um, some form of issue of housing, about to lose his or her home. And so many of these issues are connected. That is why wraparound services, um, they're so important. And the model of bringing all of these great organizations under one roof in a centrally location, a uh, central located uh, building such as Borough Hall, it allows us to do a one-stop shop where a person can come in and we can unify our resources uh, uh, to make sure that we can be a provider of those who need to have services provided to them. So this is a great model to follow, a great initiative, and I cannot thank uh, our partners enough for participating in this. Uh, we're open to any questions at this time before we cut the, the red ribbon. Thank you. Wednesday. Wednesday. If you go to our website, Borough Hall website, you'll find all that information. And you know, before we actually uh, cut the ribbon, I have to ask two of my colleagues to stand up here because they worked very diligently. Tanya and Andrew, could you please join us? Thank you. We're, we are the attorneys of Rural Hall. <laughs> Ready? Yes, 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 yes. One, two, three.